हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम मोनिका सैनी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टूडे आई विल टॉक अबाउट द मॉड्यूल डेफिनेशन एम एंड स्कोप ऑफ फॉरेंसिक एंथ्रोपोलॉजी अंडर फॉरेंसिक एंथ्रोपोलॉजी पेपर थ्रू दिस टेक्स यू विल बी एबल टू नो फॉरेंसिक एंथ्रोपोलॉजी द हिस्ट्रिकल डायमेंशन ऑफ फॉरेंसिक एंथ्रोपोलॉजी as a discipline of biological anthropology and definitions of forensic anthropology given by different authors this module will also explain scope of forensic anthropology as well as the work of forensic anthropologist so students let us see what is forensic anthropology anthropology is an amalgamation rather says a beautiful patchwork of many branches of science and humanities it answers the questions of human's past and present anthropology builds a knowledge base which has different dimensions encompassing a plethora of subjects and streams anthropology is the study of human beings with time and space it is a subject that is divided into a number of branches and these branches are physical or biological anthropology social and cultural anthropology archaeology and linguistic anthropology the physical or biological anthropology sees the physical development of human being it deals with the different processes of the human environment and the way human has been dealing with it ever since the advent of life forms it studies the human evolution with various stages the factors affecting that process and various determinants whereas in social anthropology we study the human beings as a social and cultural animal and the various cultural processes are also a part of social anthropology human beings are affected by the society and in return it affects on it archaeology is the expression and capability of humans to create and to build it has a temporal process at a given point of time and the bio archaeology it adopts a population oriented approach and typically involves the examination of human remains and artifacts from the entire historic and prehistoric cemetery whereas the language is one of the most vital component of our culture and it is also important component of our society and to the very existence of humans thus linguistic anthropology amalgamates anthropology including its all branches that is biological socio cultural and archaeological anthropology thus forensic anthropology is the sub branch of biological anthropology which uses the anthropological knowledge and applications for medico legal process forensic anthropology encompasses the field recovery of partly or completely skeletonized remains and their laboratory management and analysis the forensic anthropology involves the determination of whether the skeletal remains are of animal or human origin the number of individual represented the race sex age and stature of the individual concerned it also involves the pathologies injuries and anomalies that are present the identification of unique individual characteristics the estimation of time since death and manner and cause of death and 
the investigation of the individual's identity by matching of post-mortem skeletal evidence with anti-mortem records or portraits. So, forensic anthropology forms an integral component of investigative team in the field, laboratory and in the courtroom. For example, during the identification process, forensic anthropologists, they may work with the police investigators, crime scene technicians, forensic pathologists, odontologists, molecular genetists, radiologists and fingerprint experts. New members are added to the team if a case goes to the trial, including the attorney and a variable number of additional forensic ex specialists such as ballistic experts, trace evidence examiners and document examiners, each of whom testifies as to his or her scientific or technical findings. So students, now let us see how forensic anthropologist is helpful for the court of law in a number of ways and these ways include the determination of humans or determination of non-humans. It, it is also helpful in the race determination, individual identification, minimum number of individual, age determination, sex determination, number of individuals and disease processes. When a human body is discovered, the primary objective in an investigation are to identify the victim and to establish the cause and the manner of the death. If the remains are found relatively soon after the death, these goals are usually accomplished by the law enforcement agency and the forensic pathologist performing the autopsy. When the remains are not discovered, then until sometimes after death, however, the expertise of a forensic anthropologist is often needed. In case involving skeletal remains, it is the forensic anthropologist who can best establish a profile of age, ancestry and sex and stature and it provides the assessment of the trauma. Now, I will talk about the historical development of forensic anthropology. In 1982, Thompson distinguished three periods in the development of forensic anthropology, that is pre-1939, 1939-1972 and post-1972. Forensic anthropology has its roots principally in the anatomical sciences. Before 1939, anatomy departments were the principal contributors to the methodology of human skeletal variation using collections of cadavers of known age, ancestry, sex and morbidity. Undoubtedly, at this time, physical anthropologists and anatomists were consulted by law enforcement agencies regarding skeletal remains. Thomas Dwight of Harvard University, H. S. Wilder of Smith College in Massachusetts, of the Field Columbian Museum in the Chicago, were among these anthropologists interested in the forensic aspect of anthropology. During the same period, Ernest Hutton of the Harvard University and Alice Hardlicka expressed interest in the field. Among the contributions made by the Hardlicka was his key role in the founding of the American Association of Physical Anthropologists in 1930 and the American Journal of Physical Anthropology in 1918. Hooten later published 
मेडिको लीगल आस्पेक्ट ऑफ फिजिकल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी इन क्लिनिक्स इन विच इट डिस्क्राइब द डिम प्रोस्पेक्ट ऑफ न्यू मैथड्स इन द फील्ड ऑफ फिजिकल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी इन अ फॉरेंसिक कॉन्टेक्सट अनडाउटली बिकॉज ऑफ द लैक ऑफ अटेंशन गिवन टू द फील्ड In nineteen thirty nine, W. M. Krogman published a guide to the identification of human skeletal material in the FBI Law Enforcement Bulletin, marking the beginning of the second period of forensic anthropology development. At the close of World War II, several physical anthropologists were consulted. in the identification of war casualties among the anthropologists who contributed their expertise were h l shapiro of the american museum of natural history in the new york f e rendell of the u s army office and charles snow of the university of kentucky a central laboratory was established in 1947 in hawaii and was headed by the charles snow not long before in the early 1940s td stewart began his routine consultation with the fbi for forensic skeletal cases this relationship initiated by hardlicka represented an early phase of a long history of collaboration between the fbi and the smithsonian in 1962 krogman wrote the first textbook on forensic anthropology the human skeleton in forensic medicine it is a compilation of techniques and case histories of the identification of human remains in the text krogman identified methods for the determination of age ancestry sex and stature as well as individualizing characteristics and restoration of facial features on the skull a turning point for forensic anthropology came in 1972 when American Academy of Forensic Sciences instituted the physical anthropology section the physical anthropology section was the increase in the number of textbooks on forensic anthropology in 1979 stewart published essential of forensic anthropology this textbook was the first to include a chapter on courtroom procedures associated with expert testimony the post 1972 era marked an emergence of material written by anthropologist for other anthropologist and equally as important for other scientist and law enforcement personnel current literature in forensic anthropology encompasses a wide range of topics and issues anthropologists are no longer limited to the research involving the estimation of age ancestry sex and stature as was prominent during the emergence of the field although a large amount of research is still being conducted on improving and testing these techniques the anthropologist scope has reached far beyond them hardlicka was a pioneer in american physical anthropology and played a key role in founding the american association of physical anthropologists and its journal
the American Journal of Physical Anthropology. Although Hardlika is best known for his study of the peopling of New World and anthropometry, his research interest and activities were broad and included forensic topics. Hardliga's training included legal medicine and his early work focused on forensic issues regarding the biological basis for abnormal behavior. At the Smithsonian Department of Anthropology, he became involved in the legal issue relating to American Indian ancestry and skeletal analysis. Perhaps as early as 1918, the FBI became aware of Hedrika's expertise and at early by 1936, the FBI began to send specimen to Hadlika for identification. Seeds of what was to become forensic anthropology were sown in France with the work of Jean Joseph Sue, an instructor of art anatomy at the Louvre in Paris. In 1755, he published measurements of cadavers ranging in age from fetus to young adult. Although the intention was to provide artists with accurate information on body proportions and how such proportion changed with age, the work launched an important French interest leading to research on stature calculation. The shoes measurement reached a wider audience through publication by Matthew Joseph Bonaventure Orphila in two medical legal textbooks in the early 19th century. Orphila supplemented shoes measurement with his own and for many years the two databases comprised the sources used by the medical legal community to evaluate stature from incomplete remains. So students, now we will study definitions of forensic anthropology. In 1973, Snow offered a somewhat broader definition of forensic anthropology to include applications to the problems of medical jurisprudence. In 1976, T.D. Stewart, he defined forensic anthropology as that branch of physical anthropology which for forensic purpose deals with the identification of more or less skeletonized remains known to be or suspected of being human. According to the Jubilekar, forensic anthropology represents the application of knowledge and techniques of physical anthropology to the problems of medical legal significance. Goals are usually to assist in the identification of human remains and to help in determining what happened to the remains, especially with regard to the evidence of foul play. Usually, the material examined consists of largely or completely skeletonized remains or skeletal evidence that has been recovered from fleshed remains. According to the Fisher, forensic anthropology, it is defined as the application of anthropological and skeletal biological principle to the medical legal issues. The term medical legal refers to the capability of medical science to shed light on the legal matters such as identity of the deceased, 
and circumstances of death according to the american board of forensic anthropology forensic anthropology is the application of the science of physical or biological anthropology to the legal process physical or biological anthropologist who specialize in forensics primarily focus their studies on the human skeleton now i will tell you about the scope of forensic anthropology the forensic anthropologist do analysis of skeletal badly decomposed or otherwise unidentified human remains which is important in both legal and humanitarian context forensic anthropologist apply standard scientific techniques developed in physical anthropology to analyze human remains and to aid in the detection of crime in addition to assisting in locating and recovering human skeletal remains forensic anthropologist work is to assess the age sex ancestry stature and unique features of a descendant from the skeleton forensic anthropologist frequently work in conjunction with the forensic pathologist they also work in conjunction with odontologist and homicide investigators to identify a descendant document trauma to the skeleton and estimate the post mortem interval forensic anthropologist are helpful for the investigation of crime or crime scene because of their training in cultural anthropology archaeology taphonomy and biological anthropology their training in cultural anthropology allows them to identify cultural markers that define ethnic religious or national groups their training in anthropology archaeology and taphonomy gives them the skill needed to excavate clandestine graves and crime scenes where any incident occurred in particular taphonomy or the interpretation of all events affecting the remains between death and the discovery represents the most important contributions made by anthropologist their training in biological anthropology gives them the skills needed to analyze skeletal remains and the associated material needed to prove genocide when examining the superstitious graves and remains of murder victims the forensic anthropologist help in solving the problems in a number of ways first they determine various demographic attributes of the victim such as ancestry or ethnic group sex age and stature of the individual second they collect evidence of traumatic injury to determine the nature and cause of the trauma to assist in the determination of the manner of death third based on their knowledge of decomposition and deterioration of human remains after death they estimate the time that passed since the individual died or the post mortem interval fourth they assist in the location of remains buried or left on the surface of the ground in a way 
that allows the collection of all relevant evidence needed for the forensic investigation. Fifth, using knowledge of skeletal features, forensic anthropologists can provide information unique to each individual to obtain a positive identification. Additionally, the practice of forensic anthropology can be seen as a clinical practice because it employs both clinical and actuarial judgment. Clinical judgment requires the practitioner to process information learned from both academic training and hands-on or clinical analysis of human remains. In contrast, actuarial judgment requires interpretations based on calculations using empirically established formulas. The forensic anthropologist play an important role in establishing the cause of death in an investigation. These individuals work together in order to draw conclusions from evidence primarily by applying their knowledge of the human skeleton to a case or subject at hand. The main focus of a forensic anthropologist is to process the crime scene, examine and process remains, create a biological profile, provide appropriate documentation of their findings and testify in the court of law. Their knowledge of the human body contributes to the outcome of a death investigation by providing law enforcement agencies with expert answers and conclusions which ultimately aids in the outcome of any given case. So students, let us see what we have studied from this module. Forensic anthropology is the sub-branch of biological anthropology which uses the anthropological knowledge and application for the medical legal processes. Forensic anthropology encompasses the field recovery of partly or completely skeletonized remains and their laboratory management and analysis. It involves the determination of whether the skeletal remains are of animal or human origin. It also involves the number of individuals represented, the race, sex, age and stature of the individual concerned, the pathology, injuries and anomalies that are present, the identification of unique individual characteristics, the estimation of time since death and the manner, cause of death and the investigation of individual's identity by matching of post-mortem skeletal evidence with anti-mortem records or portraits. So forensic anthropologists, they are helpful for the investigation of crime or crime scene because of their training in cultural anthropology, archaeology, taphonomy and biological anthropology. Their training in cultural anthropology allow them to identify cultural markers that define ethnic, religious or natural groups. Their training in anthropology, archaeology and taphonomy gives them the skill needed to excavate clandestine graves and crime scenes where any incidents occurred. 
the main focus of a forensic anthropologist is to process the crime scene, examine and the processing of remains, creating a biological profile, provide the appropriate documentation of their findings and testify in the court of law. The knowledge of human body contributes to the outcome of a death by providing law enforcement agencies with expert answers and conclusions which ultimately aids in the outcome of any given case. Thank you.